Friends, Jay Todd here with Casey Clark from the American Gaming Association, and we're talking about congressmen, U.S. congressmen involved in this kind of uh, collaborative effort to understand our industry. Uh, tell me about this. So it's a pretty interesting reconstitution of the Congressional Gaming Caucus, which existed several years ago, but then somehow went dormant. So what we've seen is that we've put a lot of effort behind working with the co-chairs, Guy Reschenthaler from Pennsylvania and Dina Titus in Nevada, to reconstitute this group of, of members of Congress who are from gaming states and from gaming districts who really appreciate our industry more than others and be good advocates for us uh, in, in Washington. Okay, so yeah, I mean, part of the problem, you look back at things like the UIGEA and what we're, what we're going through now with the WIRE Act, and part of, I think, our problem is that we are in a industry which can be quite legally complex. So if we actually have some of the people in these spots that are, that are being educated about this, maybe being able to share that information with their colleagues, this could actually benefit our industry tremendously, couldn't it? I think that's right. I mean, I think what we know is that in the 43 states where there are casino gaming or sports betting, legalized, legalized sports betting or, or casino gaming across the country, there's tremendous opportunity for people to, to appreciate what we do in those communities. So there's jobs, there's tax revenue, there's partnerships with small business, there's nonprofit engagement, all the things that we do when we come into a community that don't fit the antiquated stereotype of what gaming really is. So the opportunity of the Gaming Caucus is to really drive our value and benefit into the conversation more. So like you're saying, people who, who are evaluating our industry from a legislative or regulatory standpoint better understand what we're bringing to the table. Okay, so we have primarily a, a lot of people that are in the caucus now are, are from gaming states, have gaming in there. Uh, is there a, a goal? Is, is it necessary to reach out and, and bring us the use? I mean, the vast majority of states do have gaming, but maybe not all the districts within those states. So is it, uh, is it something that the caucus is going to be proactively looking out and gaining? And, and moving forward, I mean, what's the goal of the caucus? Is it just to discuss or is it to educate? Is, it, is there some political agenda with it? I don't think there's a defined agenda yet other than supporting the industry's interest. It's made up of members of Congress, so they're influential people who, who understand our industry better than others. So our hope is that working collaboratively with the AGA and others, we're going to be able to build that population. There's over 30 members of Congress in it today, and we look forward to growing that because I think there's a lot more that we can do and a lot more educating that we need to do with influencers on the Hill. Okay, so the real benefit of this will come, say, at the next time there is something at a federal level uh, where our industry is at the fore. And uh, instead of having a bunch of people that are trying to play catch up and reread laws and have no idea how gaming actually works, we'll have people in there who actually know what our industry is about and that it's not the, some great evil that's vague and misunderstood. I think that's right. We're not starting from square one anymore. You know, we were an industry that had a great advocate in Harry Reid for a long time to help protect the interests of the industry. and that we don't have that anymore. And so we have to work really diligent, diligently, excuse me, to build those congressional champions. And we're doing a good job at it. You know, it's a good start to have 30 plus people in the gaming caucus and we're going to build that. So a lot of opportunity for us to build momentum uh, on Capitol Hill to either support proactive or positive um, legislation on in federal policy or prevent it. You know, sports betting, and as you know, not just sports betting, but our industry is largely regulated on the state by state basis. And that's the model that our, our members have all built their businesses on. So in a lot of cases, it's making sure that Congress understands that that's where the regulation should be. I agree completely. Always a state's rights issue. Mr. Clark, thank you so much. It's been very educational. Thank you.